Now on KGW News. And I've thought about it every day for the last 30 years. Her mother was gunned down in a Vancouver parking lot three decades ago. But she says police got the wrong guy for the murder. Now she's taking justice into her own hands. My goal is to make sure that the people that killed my mom are brought to justice. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Dan Haggerty. And I'm Laurel Porter. Pune Gray is now offering a big reward to find her mother's killer. To her, this murder took away both her parents. KGW's Mike Benner is live in the newsroom to explain, Mike. Yeah, Laurel, it was Pune Gray's dad who spent time in prison for the crime. Police believe he was the killer. Pune says the case was based on faulty ballistics and circumstantial evidence. Her parents were in the middle of a divorce, but Pune does not think her dad murdered her mom. In fact, her dad, Mike, maintained his innocence up until his death earlier this year. Effie Antazari was shot to death in early May 1989 in the parking lot of her apartment complex on Northeast 49th Street in Vancouver. A neighbor reportedly saw someone speed away from the scene in a car nothing like estranged husband Mike's. In addition to that, neighbors reported that in the months before Effie's death, she would get into loud physical fights with a guy that does not match Mike's description. Count this among the many reasons Pune Gray believes authorities got the wrong guy and her mom's killer is still roaming the streets. What's kept me motivated is doing this for my mom. I promised her 30 years ago after she was murdered that I was going to do this someday. I didn't know when, but that I would um, go after the people that murdered her. And I am going to keep my promise to my mom. All right, so listen to this, a reward of up to $250,000, yes, a quarter million dollars, is offered for information that leads to Effie's killer. If you have that information, you can contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office or representatives handling Effie's estate. You can find that information on our website, kgw.com. Laurel. Thank you, Mike. There are new developments late tonight in the sex abuse case involving a high-profile Portland activist and real estate developer. Terry Bean and his former defense lawyer have both been arrested. KGW investigative reporter Kylie Boshi was there to question him when he got out of jail tonight. Booked and charged, wealthy Portland developer and Democratic donor Terry Bean turned himself into police Wednesday afternoon after returning from vacation. Bean was released from the Multnomah County Jail after posting bail. Mr. Bean, what's your response to these new allegations? Ridiculous. It's all so. I'm not going to talk anymore. Bean's former defense lawyer, Derek Ashton, was also arrested Wednesday. Both men face a felony accusation of computer crime. Bean is awaiting trial in Eugene after allegedly sexually abusing a 15-year-old boy in 2013. Prosecutors have previously said there's evidence that Ashton helped bribe Bean's alleged victim to keep him off the witness stand. Ashton argued the prosecutor was overzealous in his claims of wrongdoing by Bean's legal team. Terry Bean's new lawyer issued a statement saying in part, while we are shocked at the new charge and the state's apparent shotgun approach, Mr. Bean unequivocally denies all of the state's claims and their attendant innuendo. Terry Bean plans to plead not guilty. I have no comment. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News. In our big story breakdown tonight, it appears the man accused in the deadly Mac stabbing from 2017 will not face the death penalty, and it's because of a change in state law. Jeremy Christian is accused of killing two people on a Portland Max train in 2017. Those two people and a third man were standing up for two young women who Christian was allegedly yelling racist comments at. Now, prosecutors wanted to charge him with aggravated murder. That's the only charge that carries the death penalty in Oregon. But here's the problem. In September, a change in the law changed the definition of aggravated murder. So here is where it sits in the state now. You would have to kill two or more people through organized terrorism, intentionally kill a child younger than the age of 14, kill a person while already in jail or in prison for murder, or kill a police officer. Christian's attorneys say none of this at all applies to his case. And apparently the prosecution agrees with that. They have filed documents to change those charges now from aggravated murder to first degree murder. The maximum punishment for that, that conviction is life in prison. There is a hearing now set for Friday where a judge could approve the change. Christian's trial is set now to start in January. 
New here at 11, a Clackamas County woman is accused of stealing thousands of dollars in cosmetic procedures, including Botox, from local med spas. And get this, she even posed for before and after pictures. KGW's Katherine Cook has the story. At Evolve Aesthetics in Southeast Portland. I love helping people. Jessica Colburn takes pride in her work. Helping them improve, improve their appearance, which also helps them feel better. It's what she aimed to do when 58-year-old Teresa Hansen walked in October 18th. Hansen even posed for this before picture, which KGW got from the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. Jessica says she injected Botox and fillers into Hansen's face, $2,500 in services. As we were leaving to come up to the front to pay, she said she was not feeling well and asked to use the restroom, and then she never came back. I went and checked and she was not there, so then we realized, you know what, I think that she stole from us. Surveillance photos show Hansen leaving the building. Evolve Aesthetics filed a police report with Clackamas County. Days later, deputies arrested Hansen at a home in Milwaukee and charged her with first degree theft of services. Here's her mugshot. Not quite an after photo. It's a big hit to us. The staff at Evolve called other med spas to warn them about Hansen. Jessica says they learned at least three others had already been taken. One of those clinics is VIP Med Spa here in Clackamas. The manager says Hansen came by in February. She got almost $3,000 worth of cosmetic treatments and stole $600 in skin care before walking out the door without paying. When I read the report, I thought it was strange. Clackamas County Sergeant Marcus Mendoza says in cases like this, many businesses don't realize that they're the victims of theft. He says they can and should file a police report. That includes in Hansen's case. She could be looking at, you know, some serious consequences for her actions. And then, of course, if there are additional charges, that would just compound her issues. That's exactly what Jessica is hoping for. Just to make sure that this doesn't happen again to someone else. In Southeast Portland, Katherine Cook, KGW News. We learned about this story from a viewer tip. If you have a story idea, you can submit it to us on our website. Email us at newstips at kgw.com or just find us on Facebook. Now let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. Two people were killed, two others were critically injured in a crash near Sheridan tonight. It happened on Highway 18 near Gopher Valley Road. Police say two cars were involved in this crash. They don't know yet exactly what caused it, but this is the third fatal crash in the same spot in the past six months. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden is making a trip to the West Coast next month. He's stopping in Los Angeles first, then heading to Seattle, and he'll be in Portland on Saturday, November 16th. We don't know how long he's going to be here or where he's going yet. We'll keep you posted when we get more information. Dozens of neglected horses have been rescued now from a property in Lane County. The horses were very thin. They were showing their rib cages. Investigators say they gotten several calls from concerned neighbors. The Oregon Humane Society sent a team out from Portland to help collect some evidence. A Gresham based group will now help care for these animals. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in parts of downtown Portland. Crews are painting some of the bus only lanes the color red. And when you put them next to the bike lanes, well, you get this kind of holiday look. <laughs> the idea is to make the lanes stand out and hopefully keep drivers from going through them. This one is on Southwest Main between 1st and 2nd Avenues. The city plans to paint more of the bus lanes around downtown next year. Next, how in the world did this happen? A semi gets beached on the Oregon coast. How the driver got caught in high tide and the volunteer group that knew just how to get him out. Then, if a volcano made music, what would it sound like? Hear how an Oregon geologist is turning the rumble of molten rock into songs. And later, the Nationals. They seal the deal in a historic World Series. What made the win so unique? I'm Matt Safino. We had an amazing sunset, and I'll explain what the Jupiter Chaser is too, and show that as well. It's great. Find out if we're going to have great weather like that for Halloween. The trick-or-treater forecast will come as well.